from wherever, whenever you are listening to me, this is Michael Vaughn, and welcome to Fundamentally Speaking. You have arrived at the right place to be encouraged and challenged in the Word of God as you deal with life today. In this podcast, I take fundamentals found in the Word of God and expound on them in ways you may not have considered to help you grow in your walk with Father God. A Father God has called you with a purpose to fulfill, and whatever that purpose is, with a spiritual life built on the fundamentals of God's word, you will be able to execute it. That is what this podcast will help you to do. So if you're not driving, operating on heavy equipment or on people, I encourage you, get something to write with, something to write on, and don't forget your Bible as I launch into our topic for today on Fundamentally Speaking. You've got to stand before God about what you do in this body and make it an excuse saying that, well, they told me this and that's what I believed and they messed me up. That's not going to fly. That ain't going to fly. You got to stand for yourself. Hallelujah. So because of that, you want to make sure that you are partnering with and doing what the Lord Want you to do. So I gave you one truth. I gave you two truths. Here's the third truth. If anyone tries to confirm the Holy Spirit tells them something that's contrary to the Bible, it will be good to reject what they say. I'm just saying. If they want to try to get Holy Spirit out of the equation, let them alone. If they try to confirm that Holy Spirit tells them something that's contrary to the Bible, my recommendation, let them keep walking. What they should do if they bring forth a revelation that uh, may be new, may be different, they should encourage you to seek it out yourself. They should encourage you to study it out yourself. They should encourage you to pray and seek Holy Spirit yourself. Because that means that, you know what? Hey, I'm delivering this. This is what I believe I heard. This is what I believe God is speaking to me. But you know what? I'm a man. I'm flesh just like you, and I could miss it. But this is what I believe God is telling me. And so until he tells me something different, I'm going to do it. But guess what? You are an individual. You are a child of God. You have Holy Spirit on the inside of you. You are an anointed vessel. You are a man or woman of God. You can get insight, information, understanding from Holy Spirit just like I can. So how about you go And hear what Holy Spirit is saying to you. Well, that is my intro. (laughs) That is what we're trying to get you kind of poised with. So now let's dig in this a little deeper. Now, if we're going to reject what somebody's saying, guess what that means? That means that we've got some due diligence on our part. In other words, you can't be a passive consumer of the Bible and then want to castigate people that are spending time studying the Bible. Now this assumes this presupposes that the folk are saved and love Jesus. Okay. I, I'm just saying, I'm taking that for granted is that the saving love Jesus. So don't begin to question people who are spending time in prayer, spending time in meditation, spending time digging in the word of God, spending time partnering with Holy Spirit, don't begin to just you you throwing off on them and you haven't read the Bible uh, for 10 years. You haven't prayed uh, in five, me- five weeks. So it's, it requires some due diligence on our part in that we need a foundational understanding of how the Bible is to be understood. And I'm going to give you some of that here on this month. First of all, you need to understand if you if you understand this point, it's going to help you. The Bible is not, hear the preacher, the Bible is not a translation. <laughs> People are like, what in the world? What are you talking about? It's not a translation. Let me give you, let me help you with this. Translation is when, if I'm in, if I, if I'm speaking Spanish and I say uno, right? Translation is in English one. If I say dos, that is two. If I say trace, that is three. A translation is a one for one. The Bible is what is known as a transliteration. So I may be saying uno, dos, tres, cuatro, cinco, seis. And somebody else may be translated. He was counting numbers. 
or that there are numbers that are uh, need to be understood. So a transliteration is getting the principle across, not the exact word across. You got to understand me here. The Bible is a transliteration, not a translation. So the exact words are not translated, as I said, one for one. Because see, get this, the Bible was written Hebrew, Greek, and Aramaic. In the Old Testament, it was Hebrew. In the New Testament, it's Greek and Aramaic. Now, we, English is not Hebrew. English is not Greek. English is not Aramaic. So when you're reading English, it was, it had to go from one language to another. And there are some words in English that don't directly translate from Hebrew or from Greek or from Aramaic. So what I'm saying is that the concept, the principle was carried. And this is why it's important when you are a student of the word of God is that you just don't use your English Bible to do study. To me, if you are only using your English Bible to study the word of God, you're not really studying the word of God. I'm just saying. To me, you can't be a diligent student of the word of God and not have some study helps. You need to have you some Strong's Concordance. You need to have uh, you uh, some uh, commentary. You need to have you some Bible dictionary. You need to have you an atlas. You need to have some Bible helps so you can understand what the Bible is saying in context. And in order to understand what it's saying in context, you have to go and put yourself in the context. And in order to get yourself in the context, you got to understand what the language is saying. You got to understand where the people were. You got to understand some of the traditions of the day. You got to understand what the situations were when what was written was written. So you can you can understand what was written to them, but you can understand what was written for you. You can understand the specificity of the situation, but you can understand the generality of the principle that God is trying to bring forth in that passage, in that verse, in that book, in that particular scenario. So the Bible is a transliteration. It was translated into English the first time by King James. By King James. That's why we have the King James Bible. That's why it's so popular. That's why it's one that, you know, uh, I'm always going to have me a King James Bible. (laughs) Praise the Lord. But that doesn't mean that the King James Bible is the only Bible. Don't misunderstand me. So it was translated into English and many other languages. Guess what? There's Russian. There's Japanese. There's Chinese. There's Spanish. There's African. There's a bunch of translations in other languages and a host of people in order to do that, folks had to folks that are not the original authors or co-authors, as I've been saying. So you had these 40 men inspired by Holy Spirit that wrote the Bible in Hebrew, Greek or Aramaic. And then you had a whole nother crop of people that took what they wrote. And brought it into other languages, Latin, English, Spanish, Russian, Italian, French, Japanese, and so on and so forth. So there's a host of people that have taken that original text and they've created various versions of the Bible. Now, can some things get misunderstood? Well, anybody that's ever played, what was it, that phone game, understand this, that as soon as you tell, you know, two or three people as it goes down the line, what was said, what originally gets missed, gets lost. And so absolutely, there could be some things that have gotten, gotten lost. That's why it's good to go back to the original language, bypass all that other stuff and go back to the original language. That's what your study helps. That's what you said. So it's, but it's incumbent on us to determine with the guidance of Holy Spirit, which versions he deems accurate. There's some versions of the Bible. I wouldn't touch with a 10 foot pole. 
some of them versions out there, I'm like, nah, they're too secular. They're too feel good. They're trying to make people feel good in 2023. They're trying to make people, uh, you know, it tries to conform to what society is saying. Listen, the Bible is nonconformist. It's, it's, it's a book of God's principles, how he dealt with mankind as history was going on. And so if it offends you, guess what? It offends you. If it hurts your feelings, it hurts your feelings. Hallelujah. But there's some versions that try to make the Bible be nice and soft, nice and comfortable because, oh, in our society, people need to be nice and soft and nice and comfortable. That's the devil. In my humble opinion. So that's why, again, we ought to partner with Holy Spirit. What version ought I read? What, what should I be picking up here? Or what study help should I get? And I can share with you and help you uh, with uh, understanding what are some good uh, study helps. So now we get back to our, our study time. So during our study here, we can and should use Bible helps, as I said, to enable us to better understand the culture of that day, the grammatical construct of the language and context in which the verse, chapter, book were written. So when I was a younger preacher, I would just have my strong concordance, which was a good place to start. I gave you the Greek and Hebrew. But as I got older and I wanted to understand more of the word of God, what I did is I got also a study help that helped me understand the grammar that was used, the grammatical construct of the sentence, of the language, the expression. Greek is a very expressive language. So how was it being expressed? So I can understand what was being said from the expression perspective. But also got some a Bible dictionary as well as an atlas so I could understand where some of these uh, things in the Bible were. For example, when David had uh, come uh, in, in, and I believe it's uh, a first Samuel chapter 31 or chapter 30, is that when he and his men had come back to Ziklag and found that their wives and children were gone and then they they just kind of uh, fainted and wanted to kill David. You have to look and see that these men had walked a long way. They had already come a long way. They were tired. You can imagine walking as far as they walked. And an atlas will help you understand how far they had to walk. They walked a long way. And they were just like you were at the end of a day. If, at the, if you're, you're at the end of a mission. You tired. You want to just go home and see your loved ones. As a man, you want to go home and see your wife, kiss your wife, kiss your children. You want to just relax. And can you imagine after that long trip, they get home and no wives or children are there. They are taken. These men were exhausted. And that's why they spake of stoning David. We got to get rid of him. Thank you for listening on today. I know that you are encouraged in the word of God. And I pray that you will not just end with the good word. However, you will ask Holy Spirit on what you need to do in order to apply it in your life. The power of the word is in its application. And when we partner with Holy Spirit to apply the word, that is how we'll be sure to grow. I encourage you to invite others to join you every week for a new episode of Fundamentally Speaking right here or on our other digital outlets. They will be blessed and encouraged as you have been. So until next time, I'm reminding you that God has a good plan for your life.